Hello and welcome back to the channel. So today we're having a look at those rubber coatings that some bright spark thought was a good idea back in the 90s. So you'll remember the original Scion 5 and the CNN both had rubber coatings, as do a lot of the IBM ThinkBooks, as do some HPCs, including the LG Phenom 220C which I may have acquired. There's a couple of issues with these coatings and to a lesser extent, the rubber grip bars added to some of the later pocket PCs. When new, they do look nice, but unfortunately they don't wear particularly well. Easy to scratch, attracting fingerprints, and of course on the corners, they tend to wear off almost completely, making the device look quite shabby. Eventually with time, that rubber coating can break down completely and start to become quite tacky, leaving little black splodges everywhere the device has been. I think it's for that reason that these rubber coatings are rarely used on devices today. It's not like Apple are releasing a phone with a rubberized coating when instead they can use shiny glass and titanium. But what can you do about it? Well, there are three options. The first is to attempt to restore the coating using moisturizer. Yes moisturizer. A bit weird, I have no idea why it would work, but apparently it does and we're going to try that out today. If you do know, please feel free to pop a comment below. The second option is to remove the coating completely back down to the bare plastic. And the third option of course is to strip the coating and then to restore it back to a factory finish. That third option is a bit extreme and very time consuming. It requires complete disassembly of the device and a lot of patience and sanding. So for now, let's just have a look at those first two options. So back in the 90s, lots of things had these rubber coatings. This is the IBM ThinkPad that I got as part of my 30 pound mega bundle. I'll pop a link below. Um, as you can see, it's got this nice matte finish. It's not gone tacky yet, but you can see it's lost some of its original sheen, shall we say. Other items, of course, included the original Scion 5 and the Sienna. So this has got the original rubber coating on the bottom and I actually stripped it on the top and it revealed this nice green color. This is the one megabyte version. And I've got to say, it's a great bit of hardware. You can attempt to use moisturizer to restore the coating to its former glory, or you can use alcohol gel in order to strip it. On this, I'm just going to add a little bit of moisturizer and we're going to see what happens. This is just some cheap moisturizer from a hotel. Although I have read that people use Nivea, although that sounds a bit expensive to me. So we're just going to massage it in and I'm going to do half and we're going to see what it looks like. So I'm actually just going to leave it like that to settle and then in a short while we'll buff it off and see what it's done to the coating. So a couple of months ago I got my hands on an LG Phenom which came in this lovely bag. Dan who sold it to me actually collected these things for a while but was getting rid of his collection. He does have a web page. You should check it out. It's Dan's IBM PC 110. Honestly, it's a great website and the PC 110 is a bit of a unicorn. I'd love to get my hands on one, but it's incredibly unlikely. So you'll notice that although he gave me this very nice bag, he actually wrapped it up in this weird paper. So this is actually the stuff that comes on the back of stickers or labels. And he's done that specifically because this particular unit has gone sticky. So you can see it's all very tacky. And this is because that rubberized coating that we've been talking about is in quite the state of disrepair. You can see it's so bad, it's actually gripped hold of the paper in some places, even though it's plasticized. Before we move on to take a look at trying to restore the coating, I'd just like to show you the difference in size. So this is the LG Phenom, and to put it in perspective, here is my Genada 728. Look at the size difference between those. 
What an absolute beast. So because the bottom isn't too far gone, it's a little tacky, but it's not too bad. I'm gonna actually try a little bit of moisturizer on this and see if it's effective. It'll give us an idea as to how far gone these coatings can be before it becomes impossible to revive them. So I'm just gonna do the same as we've done on the ThinkPad, and I'm just gonna gently rub some of this in and then we're gonna let it settle for a bit and we'll see how it gets on. I should say, you probably don't wanna moisturize the label. I know I've done that, but it might lift it. Let's see what's going on here. So it's had about 40 minutes. So let's just um, take the moisturizer off and see how it looks. It's hard to see on camera, but to me, it actually does look better. It's as if a lot of the small scuffs have just been lifted. All looks a much more similar color than on this half. I'm not gonna say it's miraculous, and this wasn't in bad condition when we started, but yeah, it does seem that a bit of moisturizer does seem to improve these rubber coatings. So since that does seem to have worked, I'm gonna put another bit of moisturizer on. I'm gonna to stick to the same area. I'm just gonna do this one half again. So this time I'm gonna leave it a bit longer. I think I'm actually gonna leave it overnight and we'll have another look at it tomorrow. Meanwhile, let's see how this is getting on. It's been about 40 minutes, maybe an hour. Well, it's not sticky anymore, so that's a good thing. I'm just gonna clean the moisturizer off and see what it's like. Well, it smells delightful. It's still a bit bobbly in places. It's no longer sticky. It's certainly not smooth. I'm gonna put a bit more on and we're gonna do the same as we've done with the ThinkPad and we're just gonna come back to it tomorrow and see what it's like. So here we are 24 hours later and as you can see a lot of the moisturizer has actually been absorbed. Let's clean off the remainder and see what it's like. So I think you'll agree when you look at this we've got a much cleaner finish. It's got rid of a lot of those minor scratches. Overall this looks a lot better and has certainly been worth doing. I wonder how much more improvement we'd get to leave it longer, although overall this looks very good and is a big improvement. It actually looks a lot better in person than it does even on the camera. So how about our very sticky phenom? So we'll clean the moisturizer off and see how it's doing. So it's still very slightly tacky. It's not bad at all though, and it's much better than it was. I think I might try this a little bit longer on here and see what kind of improvement we get. It is still rough in places where the rubber has completely broken down. So it might be that we end up stripping it. So we're now a couple of days on, and although the moisturizer appeared to get rid of the tackiness on the bottom, as you can see, it's become quite tacky again as this. So clearly this coating is just too far gone in order to restore with a bit of moisturizer. So sadly, the moisturizer trick, while it worked well on the ThinkPad, hasn't worked on the Phenom. I think ultimately the coating is just too far gone. It was extremely tacky when I got it and quite rough to the feel. And while some of that tackiness has gone, it just doesn't look great. So instead, I think we're gonna strip it. If you are enjoying this video, a like and subscribe would be excellent. If you're really enjoying this video, then you can now become a member. At the moment, there's only one membership level. Should it prove popular, I will produce another. And with that, there'll be more benefits but for the moment, you can get this lovely sticker. Either way, just by watching this video, you are supporting the channel. So you might wonder why I'm choosing to use hand gel and not isopropyl alcohol. No, it's not the cost. It's in fact that I've found that 
isopropyl alcohol doesn't clean quite as well as hand gel when it comes to these rubberized coatings and trying to strip them or at least remove the tackiness. It may be that it's because they contain moisturizers or it might be that they contain a small water content. I don't honestly know, but I definitely have found them better at removing these rubberized coatings. You can see it stripped it straight off. I realise I could use a plastic scraper in order to remove all these bits of paper, but I don't want to risk actually scratching the plastic. As you can see, it's coming up quite nicely. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna make a start on the inside. What I'm gonna say about this is, if you're gonna use hand gel, be very careful not to get it in and around the keyboard. And the reason is, is because all those things that are in hand gel that aren't in isopropyl alcohol can make the keys sticky. So, you've been warned, I would recommend isopropyl alcohol for these bits around the keyboard. Also, it's worth noting, it is gonna strip any stickers or labels. So again, be very careful on the keys. You don't want to strip the letters from the keys. Be very careful not to get any isopropyl alcohol or any hand gel on the screen, as this can potentially damage the top layer. If you do get any on, don't panic though, just wipe it off. I'd really like to keep the name on, so I'm just gonna work my way around it. Oops, that went straight through it. Well, I'll preserve it best I can. Okay, so there's a few bits I can't get to without taking it to bits, but I think this looks a lot better and certainly feels a lot better now. It's not tacky to the touch. You can still see all the keys. I've left this bit, it is still tacky. I'm not sure what to do about that yet. I might see if I can get a new transfer for it. If I can get a transfer made, I can just strip it and that'll be a lot better. So as you can see, as weird as it sounds, it seems the moisturizer trick does work on restoring these coatings, as long as they're not too far gone. At that point, stripping the coating becomes the best option. If however, you're wanting to restore the device back to its factory finish, then I suggest you check out 701c.org. There's a link below. On here, you'll find step-by-step -step instructions, starting with safely removing the stickers and then stripping the coating before respraying it to give the same cosmetic finish. For me personally, I just want to be able to use these devices without getting sticky black hands and little splodges on every surface that they touch. Perhaps you know a better way than I do, or perhaps certain moisturizers are better than others when it comes to restoring those coatings. If you do, as always, a comment below would be appreciated. I'm looking at starting a series on living without a smartphone, in part because I find that this is a distraction throughout the day with its constant notifications and messages. But I'm also well aware that my smartphone does a lot of things, so I'm curious as to what it would be like to go back to not having one. I'm going to produce this series as a live stream, mainly because then I don't need to mess about doing lots of editing and it won't interrupt my normal production schedule. So if that's something you'd be interested in, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and watch the community page, as that's where I'll be announcing when my live streams will start. Don't worry if you miss them, they'll all go up as normal videos on my channel. As always, my name's Hugh, this is Handheld Computing, thanks for watching.